Nice to be with you today, Terry. Can you hear me? Yes, I got you now, Doug. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Doug, uh, what we want to do here is I've been talking to people about uh, repairing DC permanent magnet motors, and from the discussions that you and I have had in the past, you and I both know that they're a high-maintenance item and brushes wear out quickly and bearings go and magnets come off and that kind of stuff. So what I thought I'd do is have you come on the show here and have you like start off with first giving me a little bit of background about WindBlue and how you guys got started. Sure. Yeah, our, our, our business kind of started as a uh, uh, epiphany, I guess. We were out hunting one day, my brother and I, and uh, it was cold and... Uh, we had batteries to run a small TV and a, uh, a heater in the cabin there, and we thought, man, you got to start the car up or a generator up to keep these batteries warm and, and charged, and it just seemed like a, uh, a pretty bad idea when you're out trying to be quiet in a hunting atmosphere and you want a nice serene environment and you've got to start the truck up or you've got to start a generator up. We thought, man, you need some solar panels or wind generator, and it, it's always windy in that area, so we thought, boy, wind generator is the way to go, and... We started looking into it and started realizing the cost in a full-size commercial version. We thought we could probably build something that would work and uh, did some research. And he was an auto mechanic, and I was into the computer side. So we, we put together a, a good team that could, could build something that was strong and reliable and, and, so, and something people were comfortable with. I think that's what we found we've heard from our customers is people – are comfortable with these car alternators, no matter what you call them or whatever. They're comfortable with them. They know they can get parts for them, and you know they can rebuild them if they need to. And so it's really been a, a marriage made in heaven, the alternator and the wind generator. It uh, seems to work well in this niche of the market. Awesome. So basically, I mean, it was just a, it was a project that ended up working out into research and development to try to find the best solution for your property, and then it began sharing with others? Right, exactly. We found other people who, you know, had a small cabin they went to only on the weekends and just needed some power there and didn't want to lug up new batteries every weekend or whatever. It it, it makes a perfect uh, a perfect match for that kind of setup. Well, in reference to looking at, you know, like the a DC permanent magnet motor, which the magnets are on the outside of the case and they're more prone to get sucked to the inside, and you know, versus you know going with you know getting rid of brushes and magnets to go to a permanent magnet alternator. Um, I mean, the comparison between the two, I mean, what, what could you give me as far as a reference between a brush motor and, and your permanent magnet alternator? Well, in terms of output, the uh, size for size, a, a, a permanent magnet alternator and a permanent magnet motor might have very similar output ranges. So you might get the same output out of a, a strong permanent magnet motor that you would out of one of our permanent magnet alternators. It really comes down to maintenance-free uh, operation. The, removing those brushes is probably the, the biggest thing. And we've noticed now with the, the, the permanent magnet motors are harder to find than they ever were, and, and so the cost has kind of driven up the supply and demand. And, and so it almost makes more sense to buy one of ours than, you know, a $200 permanent magnet motor, a DC motor, uh, just because of the fact that you're going to have to maintain the brushes in that motor versus ours, which is fairly maintenance-free. So that's... Uh, that's one of the biggest advantages of the permanent magnet alternator versus the motor. Right, and I'm going to have to agree with that, but I just wanted to make sure that, you know, because what we got here, Doug, is, is we have a lot of listeners that are listening to, to my show to get the basics and the principles and stuff, and, and I don't want to be the one just to ramrod about this because, I mean, you, you know, the, the modified alternators are something that I believe you guys are probably the industry experts on at this point with all the, the years of experience you've got, so I figured it would be better to let you guys you know, shuffle through the, the common questions and stuff about the comparisons and things. And I agree completely. I mean, if you can get into a brushless design, and, and they're out of the DC permanent magnet motors that are brushed, brushless design, the output is so minimal in comparison to a modified alternator. And that's what I want to try to get across here today is, like you said, the cost of a DC permanent magnet motor, because I was on eBay looking the other day, and an Amtec 30 sold for 150 bucks. I mean, mm -hmm. I used to sell those things for fifty dollars, you know, and it's just, it is getting it's ridiculous. So definitely want to look towards the, you know, maybe a modified alternator. Some of the other questions, I mean, as far as like practical uses, I mean, with the product line that you guys currently have, um, what are practical uses that you found for your systems or that your customers are using your systems for? 
Yeah, one of the, the biggest things uh, beyond cabins, uh, weekend cabin, uh, are things like outbuildings on a property like a, a barn or a chicken house where uh, the person, the landowner is called the power company or an electrician and said, how much would it cost to run power out to this this barn, you know, it's maybe 100 or 200 yards away from the house, and it's in the thousands of dollars. And they realize that they only go out there in the evening and turn the lights on and feed the chickens or uh, maybe have a cow birthing out there, and they actually need some lighting or maybe run a power tool out there off an inverter. And they've found that it's easier to set up a small wind generator with a couple, two, three, four, five batteries out there, and uh, that gets the job done for uh, pennies on the dollar compared to what it would cost to run a standard uh, meter out there from the power company in most cases, and the, the power company charges them a monthly fee for that meter. It's not just the initial installation cost, it's the, the monthly cost. So they find in those situations it pays off very quickly because they're not paying that monthly fee. So that's one of the biggest things we've started to see now. More people are realizing, hey, I can power a small uh, set of lights on the weekends or when I'm out there in the evenings, not pull a lot of power, but uh, it's a lot cheaper than having a meter on the system. Right. Yeah, so between that and the uh, the uh, just the cost of the line between the house to the barn could easily uh, suffice purchasing one of your systems. Right, yeah, and on the generator side, it's a gambit. It's the full gambit. People experiment with designs for water wheels if they're buying just the generator itself, uh, hydroelectric type situations, wind generators of all types. Uh, they need to build a proof of concept. There's a lot of great entrepreneurs out there who are trying to come up with new ideas for alternative energy, and that's great. And they just need to prove that their concept works. They, they're they going to scale up if they get something that really works, but they've got to prove to themselves and, and others that this, this particular concept works. We have a lot of people, even universities, that buy them to prove those concepts and make sure that they've got a sound design, not necessarily in the generator, but in what terms the generator. That, that whole part... We're going to take a break here, okay? Sure. We'll take a break. I'll be right back with that. 